Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Masood Olia, and I'm back again with another uh, problem related to um, gears and to the topic of general plane motion. I teach at Wentworth University and uh, in the uh, School of Engineering and uh, re uh, in the mechanical program. Okay, so here we are given a problem where we have two gears. Gear A, as you could see, has a radius of 10 inch, and gear B has a radius of 5 inch. And then you have this arm AB, which is connecting gear A to gear B. Now, you have to be very careful, guys, guys, here, that this particular problem, you cannot treat it as gear ratios uh, problem because if it was just a simple gear ratio, and uh, by the way, the objective is to find omega of B, given omega of gear A and angular speed of uh, arm AB, you want to find omega B. If this was a gear ratio problem, it's a trivial problem because if two gears are fixed at their centers and they're rotating, imagine if you didn't have the arm AB and the two gears were fixed at their center, so you have two shafts, one going through A and one going through B. Uh, and if omega of A was 40 radians per second, since gear A is twice as large in ter terms of the radii, 10 inch versus five inch, right? Then omega of B or gear B is gonna rotate twice as fast so its angular speed would have been 80 radians per second. So that's trivial, but that's not the case. You see, if we uh, classify the motion of these gears, gear A has pure rotation motion, pure rotational motion, right? On the other hand, uh, gear B, its motion is not pure rotational. So let's talk about arm AB or rod AB. You see, AB is also fixed here at A. If I could put a pivot point here for you. It, its motion is also pure rotation. But what is happening to gear B is interesting because what is happening to gear B, gear B is going to rotate and at the same time goes, goes along this gear A. So it's like planetary motion, right? So combination of what? Translation and rotation, which is known as general plane motion. By the way, the method I'm gonna use to solve this problem is a relative motion. And I'm gonna come back with another video for you shortly, and I'll show you the instantaneous center approach, which is probably easier to handle than this method. Okay, so, how do we solve for omega of B? Now, since once we identify that the um, gear B is in general plane motion, then all we have to do is pick two points on uh, this rigid body gear B that actually uh, we have information for that. And it turns out that we already know, we can already find velocity of B easily and what about velocity of the contact point, point D? By the way, D is behind, is not a point on arm AB, is behind uh, if AB is in the front, and uh, D would be a point behind that, that would be the contact point. So D is the contact point between the two gears, right? So then you could go ahead and write the equation between point D and B for gear B. So, and it really doesn't matter. You could say velocity of D equal velocity of B plus velocity of D relative to B, or you could actually switch and put B here and D here, and then of course you have to switch those. So what does this equation mean? Basically, this equation relative motion means you're translating with B and you're rotating about B. Now, I can easily find velocity of D and velocity of B from the information I have. So if you just look at gear A, right, rotating about its center, and it's rotating at 40 radians per second, right, what would be velocity of D, which is the contact point, which is right on both gear 
a and b well it has to be r omega and in the direction of omega 90 degrees to what this radius so velocity of d becomes r omega r of course is 10 inch right times omega which is 40 so we're talking about 400 inches per second so that will go right here so I'm just plugging in 400 uh, pointing up so the approach I'm using of course is just uh, the scalar approach I put the magnitude and the direction right next to it all right what about uh, the angular speed of uh, what about I'm sorry uh, velocity of B well velocity of B look at arm a B arm AB is also rotating about A, but it's rotating, by the way, the other way at an angular speed of 60 radians per second. So then, therefore, velocity of B, which happens to be also the center of gear B, must be downward, pure rotation, right? So velocity is R omega. R is what? Now, 10 and 5, 15 inches is the length of this bar or arm. So 15 times 60, that's 900 inches per second. So that will go here. But look, this is going down. And then what is the uh, VD slash B? The way we interpret this, by the way, that means go ahead, find velocity of D as if B is fixed. This is part of the process of using this approach. So what does that mean? If you draw gear B, right? Find velocity of D as if B is fixed. So we, we know B is not fixed, obviously. B has a speed of 900, right, inch per second. Uh, just looking at, uh, by the way, the velocity of, uh, I'll show you here, gear B again. Since velocity of D is up, right, and velocity of B is down, right, 400 and 900, that implies that this gear must be rotating clockwise, right? So if you had this gear rotating clockwise, B was fixed, and you wanted to find velocity of D as if B was fixed, that would be like that. That's the VD slash B, which is, again, pure rotation, right? R omega. And we are assuming that this is pure rotation by making B fixed, right? R is five inches. And omega, of course, is omega b. So that will go right here, 5 omega b pointing up, according to this. So now look, this is a really simple problem. All I have to do is to pick a direction. There's only one component, vertical component, and one unknown here. So 400, positive, minus 900 on the right-hand side, right? Plus the 5 omega b, which is positive. And then we get 1300 equal 5 omega b. Therefore, omega b, I guess it becomes 260 uh, radians per second, which is totally different than what? Totally different than if you used, if you made a mistake and thought the motion of b or the motion of gear a and b is just a simple gear ratio problem, as if both gear a and b are what? Fixed, OK? So uh, I will come back and I'll show you a different method. Uh, the, as you guys know, it's called the instantaneous center of zero velocity. And you see how we can handle this problem with the same number. And we see if we get the same exact uh, outcome. OK, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, guys, uh, please subscribe. And uh, almost every week, I have some new videos for you. Again, thank you. And see you soon.